Okay, so what we're gonna talk about today is the whole Steamboat Willie, AKA Mickey Mouse copyright news. So you, you guys heard about this, right? So Mickey Mouse, well, not exactly Mickey Mouse. A certain kind of Mickey Mouse as he appears in the cartoon Steamboat Willie. This will be interesting because on the surface level, it's just about like Mickey Mouse and kind of like a joke and stuff, but there, there's a lot to talk about that seems to continually be a topic of interest for us in the community that take part of like creative content, whether you're a consumer or an artist yourself. And that has to do with like copyright, IP, brand, fair use. There's a whole lot of things that are like interacting with this specific news about Mickey Mouse. Okay, so there he is. This is this right here. This is what we're talking about. I, I mean, I assume you guys have seen this on Twitter, this image. I believe this is the very first piece of media that has this character like this cartoon this is like where mickey mouse comes from this is the very first depiction of mickey mouse this was in 1928 okay so this is it this is actually my first time watching this this is gonna be my first time seeing this too there he is petey pete i didn't realize he appeared in this um first cartoon so this is also his first appearance that was essentially the very first cartoon that mickey mouse appeared in that's also the first thing i guess there's like some confusion it's like steamboat willie versus mickey mouse it's like can you call it mickey mouse yeah so this is one of the posters i found mickey mouse sound cartoon steamboat willie so at this point it, it's definitely like he's mickey mouse in this cartoon so from the get-go they had like a name for him i don't think you can like use Mickey Mouse's name. I'm pretty sure that's still copyrighted. From what I saw, it seems like you can refer to him as Mickey Mouse, but if you make something, you can't say it's Mickey Mouse. If I made some kind of cartoon using this character, I, that's fine because Mickey Mouse has entered public domain, but I can't call and title my thing and advertise it as like something something Mickey Mouse or Mickey Mouse something something. It's a Mickey Mouse is the character in this specific cartoon is Steamboat Willie, which is very interesting that this is Mickey Mouse's first appearance, but his first appearance is like in a skit. Maybe they just had really good intuition that this character was going to be such a hit. So what happened was that this cartoon being made in 1928, the copyright on everything in this cartoon, specifically what people have been focusing on, is this depiction of Mickey Mouse has entered the public domain. So what that means is that the copyright is essentially expired after almost a hundred years, just shy of a hundred years. Now people can take this character and do whatever they want with it. Essentially, what does that like amount to? Well, now since this depiction, and that's the other thing, it has to be this specific depiction. It can't be a modern version of Mickey Mouse, you know, with the white pupils. And it's like a very specific thing. It's this exact version of Mickey Mouse. And I guess however else he may appear in that early cartoon. So I guess it can be like him like this without his hat. Yeah, there's a colored version as well. So so this is an early uh, poster during that time as well. So you could color it with the red pants and stuff. But as you can see, it's kind of like it's in the face and kind of the shape of it, I think, is the most marked characteristics of this early Mickey Mouse. It's interesting. I guess some people were like ready for this. Like I said, you, you can now take Mickey Mouse and since it's a character in the public domain, which I guess like what is public domain? So I went on Wikipedia, I just found a definition. So the public domain is comprised of works that are no longer in the copyright period or were never protected by uh, copyright in the first place. So the public domain is just, it's weird. It's not exactly a thing. It's like the reverse of a thing. It's the, the opposite of every single copyrighted work. And I thought this was funny. Where did this all start? Copyright, public domain, just like everything else. It started with the Roman empire. I found that out too. It started with the Roman empire, like all things all things worth talking about. So the Romans, they had like, uh, I'm going to butcher this, but so there's a phrase, res communes, essentially translates to things that could be enjoyed by mankind, such as air, sunlight, ocean. So it was like the sentiment that the Romans had all long, long ago, way before Mickey Mouse, that there, there should be like things that you can't either naturally or by mandate. Like there's just certain things like the phrase implies air, sunlight, the ocean, which is partly not true, I think. Do people own parts of the ocean? Like if I go to California and I'm at the beach, that shoreline, like surely I can't just do whatever I want to it. Like some entity must own the ocean. <laughs> 
right? So I, I saw uh, one of you guys comment while we were watching the little clip of um, that Mickey Mouse. Someone was saying that the sound was really synced up. So that, that was actually like one of the big deals about this cartoon when it first came out. You see it here, it says like sound cartoon. Uh, Steamboat Willie was one of the first, I think the wording is like synchronized audio. One of the first cartoons to have synchronized audio to it. So they made like a point to do like these little bits and stuff where like the, the music and audio matched up. Yeah, and so what's interesting is that people have already like started to make their own original content to feature this character. But it, it kind of, I think there's some confusion because there's a lot of discussion and, and arguing on Twitter because some people are saying that's not the right version or they're going to get in trouble, this and that. The main one people have been looking at is this, which is a horror game. Okay, so this is Infestation Origins. They must have been working on this, waiting for the copyright to expire and have Mickey Mouse enter the public domain because as soon as it expired and the news broke out, this trailer dropped. Which, now that I think about it, if Disney really wanted to sue them, surely some argument could be made that, I don't know, like they started working on it before I, that that see that's already kind of touchy gray area i feel but this is a game that came out sorry the trailer of the game came out featuring mickey mouse taking advantage of this public domain i have not seen this yet as well so <laughs> what the hell so there he is look that's uh that's a game that's coming out that uses like mickey mouse wow that looks like trash that's besides the the quality of the game is not really what we're focusing on here also who knows might be great i guess what's not allowed is see it's it's interesting because like I, I searched it up and why is it that you can't use the name mickey mouse did that copyright it after the fact Winnie the Pooh is also another famous like cartoon character that entered the public domain. Very similarly with the old version of Mickey Mouse, the old version of Winnie the Pooh entered the public domain and it's specifically this version, the very old one in the like original stories. And so much like with Mickey Mouse, you can't use like the modern, more round, rotund uh, Mickey Mouse with like the white in the pupils you can't use like the winnie the pooh with the red shirt so it's this like naked form of winnie the pooh this old form just like with that game we just watched people took advantage of the public domain of winnie the pooh and i never saw this either i always see news from like on twitter and stuff but i've never actually watched this so they made a winnie the pooh horror it's always horror right friends for many years and they're out there Oh, it's just straight up Winnie the Pooh. Because the Mickey Mouse one was way more, like, referential. But this is just straight. There's just 100 acres. Please, to be friends, why are you doing this? Please. I would have never left that. <laughs> see, that, see that's, that's like sketchy territory, right? Because ultimately it, it comes down to like, does it count as the public domain version? Like he kind of had a red shirt there. And as far as I researched, it was like, you can't use the version with the red shirt, but it's like a 3D IRL costume. So does it count since it's not drawn? Kind of, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's, it's going to be a case by case basis. And I, I feel like Disney could sue pretty much anyone they wanted if they really wanted to, right? Why well, I wanted to talk about this mainly, well, you know, I, I'm sure you've seen all the, all the shit on Twitter and stuff about like Mickey entering the public domain. So it's like, we just went over briefly, but what I really wanted to talk about was like, kind of how it relates to, I mean, I'm an artist. I enjoy consuming art on Twitter mainly, like I follow a bunch of artists. I go to anime conventions and there's like Artist Alley, people sell art, fan art, fan content. So there's kind of like an interesting dynamic here. I thought like, okay, public domain, you can now put Mickey Mouse in whatever you want, this version, you could like sell it and whatever, but there's this topic of like fair use. That's what it comes down to. Fair use has always been a thing, parody, right? Well, people have been like, I on Twitter, I see a lot of people drawing Mickey Mouse. Like here, I drew Mickey Mouse. Even if I drew modern Mickey Mouse, like if I went on stream right now and I drew modern Mickey Mouse, am I breaking copyright law, right? It, it's like, I mean, maybe some people might like be technically, but is that fair use? There's always this discussion of fair use, which is if you don't know, like I'm allowed to, for example, if I make a YouTube video and I showcase pictures or someone's art, if I edit it and use it to convey a certain message if i i think the key word is it has to be transformative i think people 
refer to music sampling. That, that's like a discussion involving fair use. Like, is that fair use to, because some of these music samples are just other songs straight up. And I think a lot of people might say, oh, it's completely ripped. Like that's, I've listened to some songs where the underlying backing is, it's just the other song pretty much, but it's transformative. There's like this vague definition. And I think that has continually been a problem is like the vagueness of it. And it does seem to be a case by case basis. Like um, people have gotten sued. There's been lawsuits and stuff. Sometimes you win, sometimes it's fair use or it, it's hard because it, it comes down to like, uh, I think the quote, like the exact words is it's it's like plainly different from the original purposes for which it was created. So you have to transform into something new. I can already draw Mickey Mouse technically, but maybe not. I think the key thing here to take advantage of is the fact that you could like monetize it. Like we want a game trailer, like something you're gonna be able to buy using the visage of Mickey Mouse. Like I could make like a shirt. Uh, and I think that's historically been kind of the joke, the meme. It's like, oh, you want to get, you want to get in trouble? Throw Mickey Mouse on a t-shirt Disney will be knocking on your door in like 30 minutes so you could like profit technically uh, moving from like fan content to profit uh, I think that's a key thing here I feel like there's a related discussion here about art stealing fair use because it's about people using the brand the image of someone else's creation right and I, there's always this discussion of is the copyright fair because disney has held on to this copyright of mickey mouse for almost 100 years a lot of these ips um that have been argued for like once the original creator passes away like walt disney right created mickey mouse he's been long gone i mean where are we even at with like it's it, it must be his great grandkids or maybe yeah it must be his like great grandkids or something and at a certain point i think most people especially people our age and people who engage with like art on twitter are like anti-copyright generally speaking we're, we're kind of like against the man but I, I guess like at the core if I'm trying to imagine it like for example if I created some kind of character or some art yeah you know what like it that's mine right that's fair like I should be able to say no you can't just start making your own stuff I think mainly profit is is the thing that's involved like you can't just start going to town with something I created right that's mine there's a sense of fairness there I think and we take a part of it like for example I upload videos on on YouTube, if someone just yoinked my entire video, re-uploaded it, fair use and copyright laws and guidelines allow me to like take that re-upload down, for example. Same thing with artists. If someone's using your art in like a, a way that you don't approve of, you can like have it taken down. So, you know, it's kind of like a good thing, right? Like if Walt Disney made Mickey Mouse, Walt Disney should own Mickey Mouse, but he's dead now. And his kids are dead, I think, or at least very old. Like, where does it draw a line? And so originally, here's the thing. Disney always gets flack for being like the corporate mega mind trying to control and own every everything because they're like buying up everything. They own Marvel now. Uh, I saw like an image, the, the Disney conglomerate, and it's like every department and thing media that Disney owns, it's like giant. And I think the, the age old meme, the joke is that there was once a point where Disney sued another department of Disney, like, because that's how big Disney is. I, I think that's like the the one, every, the example everyone goes to. So, you know, it's like, yeah, stick to the man. And so on that note, the original copyright, and, and this is the part that makes people angry. It's like the original copyright, it's like 55 years, right? So if I'm like a young adult, I create something, I can own it for like 55 years. Okay, solid. Maybe a little short, but in 1976, Congress extended it by 20 years. The length of when a copyright lasts before something enters the public domain. And then Disney, went even further and lobbied for an additional 20 years. So 95 years in total, well past anyone's life. Like I could be a teenager, create it, and I would be long dead before the copyright expires. So yeah, they got, they got 95 years for their copyright. Speaking of, Mario will enter public domain in 2070 something. <laughs> so, when I'm an old, old man, I'll be able to draw Mario jacking off and sell it for profit. What do you guys think? Like, what's the balance? Because let's say like, like I make a character, I start a company, that company owns it. Where along the lines of detachment is it like that person shouldn't own it? We just talked about Mario and Nintendo, for example. Yeah, some person made Mario, some person made Nintendo, some group, and yeah, they should own it. But how many time has passed and people switch in and out? New people come in, 
blah, blah, blah. Where do you draw the line? Like, do you guys think 95 years? I don't think anyone would, would say that 95 years is like a good time. At the very least, as long as someone might be alive, right? So I don't know, anywhere from 40 to 60 years, maybe? Because it should last as long as a person might be alive. I, I'd be I'd be willing to go to 60, right? Because if I'm like a young adult or a teenager even, I can make something and get it copyrighted and it could last for like a, a lifetime. I think that's fair, but 95 years? What the hell is that? Right, and it's like 10 years after the death of the author. Even that seems long. But it's kind of, it's kind of weird. It's, it's kind of, because I'm just, like, I'm an artist. I art. <laughs> a lot of people, myself included, would agree that, like, we're, we're generally anti-copyright. But, like, if I make something, it's me. Like, I made it. I drew it. And... I want the profits, the benefit of it to stay within my family, even if it was 150 years, right? Because like, think about you, a thousand years, like if you made it and as, as maybe as long as it stays within the family, shouldn't I have the right to say that that's my character? I made everything about it. I want that to stay within the people that I designate as like wanting to own it, right? Because it's kind of like, this might be a little bit of a straw man, but just think about this hypothetical. Like I have a watch. This is my watch, had it forever, it's special to me. When I die, I'm gonna pass this watch on to like, let's just say like a grandkid. You know, when I die, you wouldn't just like, the government doesn't come and take, well, actually maybe, it's like, a bad example. I think maybe this happens often, but like my watch does not just enter the public auction house automatically. So yeah, I don't know. The family didn't do shit though, like true, but as the creator, shouldn't I have the right to like do whatever I want with it? I think the problem is that it goes too extreme and then people start to companies and, and entities start to take advantage of it. I think if we can all agree on like the wishes of the artist, then great. But often and more than not, it's not a sort of wholesome outcome. Copyright can be screwed to the viral Chinese YouTuber lost her, the rights to posting her own name for years because she ignorantly signed her way till she, she sued back for it. See, that's crazy. Copyright's insane. I think in esports, that's also a common thing. Like, I think, like, your likeness, young, dumb people often sign away their likeness. And so you could leave something or, and that company could, like, own literally your face. But IP and everything. Have you guys ever signed, like, have you ever guys gone to work, like, gotten a new job? And I know I have. Even at, like, weird jobs at, like, grocery store, they often have clauses in there that's, like, they own any sort of thing you might create. Even at, like, my grocery store job, they did that. Like, that's fucked. Companies are so greedy for ownership of, like, IPs and, and things. So, yeah, Disney, Disney kind of, kind of bit of a i think we all want disney to take an l right because famously there's this uh i found this story you guys might remember the story there was a child who who passed away ollie jones was like a little kid four years old passed away i'm not exactly sure what disease but it was some disease and he just really loved spider-man and so i think his father i think it was the father made this tombstone for the kid for ollie here and it has spider-man on it and disney disney came and was like no you can't do that and they forced the father to take this down so on one hand it's like I guess, yeah, technically they're in their right to do so, technically, but I think we can all agree that that's a dick move, right? There's a lot of examples like this that are widespread. This keeps coming up and up again because Disney also, they tried to copyright the, the, the phrase Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. Remember they're making some movie? Don't know, it's like, it's like a holiday originating, mostly celebrating like Mexico and, and I think like most of Latin America, if not all of Latin America, and, and here in the United States and stuff. Was it for Coco? Yeah, it might have been for Coco. Dia de los Muertos. And people were like, no, are you fucking crazy? I remember, again, this kind of theme, this is why I want to talk about this, like copyright ownership. It keeps appearing in our lives. Remember when Kylie Jenner tried to copyright the phrase rise and shine? People are ultimately evil. People are ultimately evil and we can't let them own all this shit. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that like, this is a good thing. Draw Mickey Mouse getting fucked by Winnie the Pooh. Just go ham because he's free. <laughs> See, but here's the thing. I think for you to be able to copyright like a word, I think you have to demonstrate a good case of like association to whatever brand or product that you're trying to own. Perfect example, Apple, right? Apple is just a word for the fruit. I think we would all say, yeah, that's another perfect example. Fine Bros tried to copyright React. The Beatles, another perfect example. I I, I do think if you can demonstrate enough, uh, here, I, I wrote it down. The quote, uh, the exact words are, common word is claimed in connection with 
with specific goods, the example being Apple. There's enough of a case to be made that this refers to this thing, which is, you know, the Apple products that it, and that's widespread and distinct enough for us to copyright it. But it's only in that specific use case. They can't just go around copywriting wherever the word Apple happens to be, right? They'd make like more money than God. If they could go in every instance of the word Apple, they could like copyright and claim like recompense or something. Can Professor Orlando copyright the word Lando? Probably not, but probably Professor Orlando. Again, I think I would have to demonstrate like a distinct association with that word and whatever item brand product I'm, I, I have. Earlier I said, imagine I'm an artist. If I make something like I should be able to say that my family can continue to own it, right? As it being my creation. The problem is it kind of goes out of control. And with these companies specifically, Disney's probably seething. They're probably, imagine up there, Disney headquarters, there's like a big Lex Luthor S table and there's like a bunch of businessmen in suits. Mr. Mouse, whoever's a CEO at the head of the table and he's like, God damn it, fuck! Throws the papers, throws his coffee against the wall. God damn it, they got him! My early depiction as pictured in Steamboat Willie 1928 short film, fuck! They're probably seething and it's like good because they're evil. It's just being greedy. And like they don't respect copyright and art and whatever. Like they're just trying to protect themselves, which you know, I, that's fair. But perfect example is like, remember recently Disney got flack for the secret invasion, which is one of their shows. The ending seems largely to be made with AI, which again, everything is always seems to be like this reoccurring theme of like ownership, art, copyright always seems to come up uh, with AI specifically, you know, it, it's about AI, whenever you see it, when it comes to art, is built by stealing other people's art. And so for the secret invasions thing, was it the opening? I don't know. It was dog shit, so I didn't fucking watch it. But they don't care. They'll use it. They don't respect. It's not like they make a stand like, well, we should have our copyright. We should own it for a million years because we respect artists and da 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 da. No, no, no. It's it. See, if there was some sort of consistency, maybe there's some sort of argument to be made about like supporting Disney, whatever. But no, of course not. I guess when it, what it comes down to is, uh, what I was referring to earlier was like a sort of ethical argument about copyright. Like ethically, shouldn't I as the artist say that I can own my thing till the end of time because I'm the one who made it. With ethical reasoning, I guess you have to have more consistency. There has to be consistency across the board and, and Disney doesn't showcase that. So fuck them. I'm going to draw Mickey Mouse, Steamboat Willie, getting fucked. I'm going to sell it online. I say that, that's probably already been a thing. I guess it would technically be illegal. Again, in the spirit of this, I'm going to draw some, some stuff. Like I said, technically speaking, I think I would already be allowed to draw Mickey Mouse as some sort of fair usage. Uh, I think the key thing about Mickey Mouse going to public domain is that I would be able to sell it. Technically speaking, I'm not like doing anything crazy, but just for the fun of it, since I'm an artist, I like to draw. Let's draw Mickey Mouse in some ways that Disney would probably disapprove of. Fun. Making sure to use the appropriate colors. There we go. And technically speaking, I should be able to sell this image. Let's go for a twofer. Let's truly take advantage of the public domain here. That's fine. That's fine now. We can do this. Oh, 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 bother. Oh, public domain, Winnie the Pooh. Oh, oh, public domain, Mickey Mouse. Oh, fuck, you're so good. Like, that's allowed now. But maybe this is why Disney didn't want to give up the copyright. Well, that's that's pretty much it. That was my my take. It doesn't really differ from the majority of takes about the situation. Honestly, this whole discussion was just a punchline for me to draw Mickey Mouse and Winnie the Pooh making out. Mm -hmm.